when these people come, they kick the door and they start to tie us with the ropes. All of the children in that hut. Gulu is a town in resurgence, a resurgence that is a reflection of progress in the greater northern region of Uganda. The end of war, more than 10 years ago, appears to have brought with it peace and development. But is everything as good as it looks? Condition For the women that were abducted when only girls, the absence of flying bullets does little to settle their restless souls. They have no peace. Their past is vivid, for their circumstances are a constant reminder of it. <laughs> Yena <laughs> I decided to come to Guru Town, at least to be a street kid by the time my mom passed away. And uh, even though I was big like this, because my people whom I was staying with them in the village, they told me that I'm not a biological son of that home. They don't know my father, but my mother is dead. I must leave and quit. In a community where land is communally owned, family rejection isn't just a sentimental affair. It's a matter of survival, as it means a denial to access land the main source to a livelihood. Rejected by family and pushed off the land, many former abductees do not live in their villages. Instead, they live in rental spaces in Gulu town. Here, they struggle to earn a living. These women complain that as if the rejection from family and society is not enough, they are cut off from any opportunity for gainful employment. Many feel unfairly treated, for while most of their male counterparts were recruited into the UPDF, the Uganda National Army, the women were left without jobs. They were instead given a home 260,000 shillings, a few cooking utensils for their resettlement. Hantamu <laughs> 
ento ki latin madong kom bere ti kere magoro omiyo tam madong e wiya ma chao kena tan wa koñ pa duna gang no pare ka ya betu kuya ko gwa chao kena pare ko ba yu e yo it is this rejection the ostracism and lack of justice that moved stella lanam to do something we start this organization for helping ourselves because we have a lot of the challenges in the community no support in our community we think that if we come together we can support our ourselves the one who coming with the different challenges we share together we move home and home where the members they are staying war victims children network is the name of the organization members of the organization engage in income generation activities such as making clothes necklaces dolls and bracelets in a different workshop i'm going i carry them i tell to the people who they in that workshop that these things the women are making for helping their self paying the school fees renting for let life move on but beyond the economic survival these women come together for a common cause to make their grievances known I feel very bad because I'm in my country. I'm a citizen. The government it is supposed to help us. When they are taking us, they fail to protect us. And yet if you come to be the president, you promise that you are going to take care for the citizen and the all the life for the people in that country but our president is as failed to protect so that is why the rebel come and pick us we suffering we came back home they just abandoning us just like that so we are not feeling good under its voice project the association of female lawyers known as fidal uganda is supporting groups like stellas amplify and make their voices heard on different platforms. One of these platforms is with cultural leaders. One big problem that the war has done to our people is to fracture relationships. Nobody wants the support mechanism, community safety nets and support mechanisms have significantly collapsed. People have become more individualistic. You know in in IDP camps you you thrive only within your family. and you you so you 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 work for yourself and whoever is within your immediate family your relationships outside the immediate family is, is so that has now translated into a way of life of the people out here so um, many people don't care about what happens to others now the role of the cultural institution then the paramount chief and his chiefs is to make his people care for others mediation meetings and dialogues are held here at the kekal palace once every week to reconcile people and families nam ni kwae pinga ne don pe te ta chaba la ตียังกูเบอร์ติเกตปานมาคันอติเกมดีกินปลาดังนะปานมาจองเมียเบ็ดดังเนี่ยเฮียเอ็นตัวเวอร์ดีปลาดังที่เดี๋ยวกูเบ
yeah, from this meeting, I think the voices of the women were finally heard because as articulated by the chief of Pateho, who said he didn't even know these issues were still happening, these issues were still in place. The women were clearly, they were able to tell the chiefs that much as peace returned in northern Uganda, they've not moved on. Their life is still at a, at, a, at, a, at a hold because they came back with children born in captivity and they have nowhere to raise these children. They are in rentals and these children are already grown up and these children do not have a place called home. And when you look at, when you look at the, the emotions they had, clearly shows that they are willing to reconcile back with the families that rejected them. And this is something that only the, cast, the, the cultural leaders can do. It's more than 10 years since the return of the abducted girls. Many with children born in captivity, yet little has changed for them. They are stigmatized, they have few livelihood opportunities, and they struggle to meet their medical bills. But amidst all these challenges, what is it that the returnees mostly seek for? FIDA, the Federation of Women Lawyers, hopes that by enabling groups such as Stellas amplify their voices, justice will prevail. <laughs> Meetings with leaders are not enough. There is a need for transitional justice to address the needs of these war victims. But just what is transitional justice? The simplest terms, transitional justice refers to the process through which countries that have experienced large-scale conflicts and which conflicts have had adverse effects put in place mechanisms to address uh, human rights violations that have been experienced during conflict. Usually, these violations are so huge that a normal justice process cannot manage them. And so, FIDA, the Federation of Women Lawyers, is supporting groups like War Victims Children Network amplify their voices. The goal is to get the demands of war victims included in what it refers to as a comprehensive transitional justice policy. Now, when we talk about a comprehensive process, we are looking at a process, first of all, that entails victims' participation, 
because as you put in place um, mechanisms to address large-scale human rights violations, you need to make sure that the victims are part of this process, so their participation is very key. So what is happening is that most people, because they don't analyze context because victims are not participating, you end up in ta um, getting into a um, transitional justice process that does not include the people who are affected, and so your interventions may be wrong. So I may take for people cows when their need is just an acknowledgement from the state. After now, I'm talking even single day, no one from the government side to come to give us the support. Even including our president, he did not come to us to ask for the apology, to give the support for helping us. Thank you.